And joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man has come off a submission victory last week, CES 59. It is Josh Ricci, now 5-2 and two in his career, got a submission win over Jose Lugo. Arm triangle choke. Josh, man, I appreciate the time. Uh, of course, getting back on the winning side of things, man. And uh, obviously, you know, th- there's pressure in the game. It doesn't matter what happened in your previous fights. I mean, I think everyone understands there's that pressure. But did you... Was there? A, did you feel a, like a burden on your shoulder heading into this one? I mean, was there? Was did you kind of feel like, man, my back is totally against the wall? Yeah, I mean, I I did an interview before the fight, and I kind of acted like you know, the losses didn't bother me as much, you know, just because I'm not the one to sit here and make excuses until the fight happens. I'm not going to sit there and say I'm going to do this or this until the fight happens. But um. Man, them losses killed. I don't like to lose. Like I'm like a bad loser, and to sit with them losses for almost a year, I was like, it just ain't happening again. Like it's not. I don't. I didn't get in the sport to be second place. So if I thought that was the case, I'd be going to school or doing something else. Not not fighting. Is it just something just like that just ate away at you for the last year? Like, did you find yourself like constantly going back to those fights and just going? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? I mean, is it that kind of scenario? Uh, yes and no. I like, yeah. I mean, that it's a little bit of both, like that, and then just I I got beat. I don't make excuses. They they beat me. The fights are close, like um, especially the my second loss to uh, to Tiki. No one want, no one wants to fight him, and I just I have I had four four, four fights at the time. He had he'd been in the UFC, all this stuff, and I didn't say no. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna see where I am. And um, if you really watch that fight, like, you can make an argument that I won it, but you'll never hear me say that. I just I lost, but you can make an argument that I won. So um, it just ate away at me. Like I just, I literally go to bed, wake up thinking about it every day. And of course, you go out there, you get the win here. Um, how did the fight go exactly the way you thought, or was there something that Lugo did in the fight um, that surprised you? No, to be honest, see, I don't watch a lot of tape. I watch like maybe thirty seconds, and then I'm I don't really like to watch a lot, so I watch like thirty seconds just to get a gist of what they like to do. And then, um, but other than that, the fight like, did my coaches do everything. But other than that, the fight went as planned. I um, I honestly, it went way as planned, way as planned, more than I ever expected. What, what as you've gone back and you've thought about this fight of, of how you perform, whatnot, what what are you most happy about? Is there some a certain aspect of the fight that maybe it was something you yeah. were working on in the training room that you're like, man, I'm really glad that I was able to implement that in the actual fight? Yeah, to be honest, um you might you might not think it's a big deal, but to me it's um I had fun. I never have fun backstage. I never have fun like fighting. I love to practice. I just used to hate the fighting part, love and hate it, because I used to get so nervous. And this time I was calm. Like, I was like, you know, let's just go in there and, and fight and do what I love to do. Like, the outcome's gonna happen either way. You just gotta go in there and fight. And I had fun, and that was the best I ever felt. And like, that's probably the biggest thing that I could take away from that. Is that the first time you would say you were having fun on fight night? Um. I, I, if not the first time, definitely first or second, um, that I actually had fun and just loved it. Like I actually loved, loved it. I loved the whole process. And that's like one of the first times I can say that. And it's weird saying that, but that's, that's the truth. I feel like there's a lot of fighters that could very much relate to what you're saying there. You also talked about, you were very calm and, and I know uh, in right. talking to other fighters, they say, you know, that that's something that does take some time. Do you kind of right. feel like CES 59 was a turning stone t- point moment for you of like where yeah. everything just kind of came together? I, it was weird. Everything just clicked. And I never had that really in a fight. Like the day of the fight, everything just clicked. I felt I felt amazing. Like I literally felt like it, no one could beat me that night. It was just because of my mental. Like not even because of the person I was fighting. It was just mental. And um, everything just clicked. And I literally felt awesome. Like it was, yeah. Like I felt good. I was just, kind of, and it was weird though, because coming off the two losses, you would think it, I would be more like hesitant. But to be honest, the losses made me like 
I lost. So let's let's just go fight. I already lost. I already lost two in a row. Now I don't got the undefeated record to like worry about. I've just got to go fight. And of course, now you get this win, fifth you know pro win. And uh, one of the things Ed was mentioning to me is you you really feel that a year from now you're going to be in the big show. Um, yeah. Is it is it over the next twelve months? Is it just about let me try to line up as many fights as possible to to, to show those matchmakers I should be there? A little bit of both, yeah. Like I, me personally, this from like now till about beginning of summer, I want to get at least two to three more fights in. I want to fight every couple months, as long as I'm healthy. And um, so it's a little bit of both, Bob. Getting the fights, and then my goal is to get to eight and two by like summertime. Okay. And like around, that. I want to have eight and two. That's my goal. And I feel like eight and two. Man, that's a that's that's a UFC record, um, and I feel like that's a realistic goal, and you know that's what I'm shooting for. I I don't see why not, but I've, obviously it's easier said than done. Do Do you see it being at flyweight, or or do you think that you might have to move up the bantamweight at some point? No, no, 125 is that's my weight class. That's yeah, that's my weight class. I ain't gonna 135 or just they're big, you know. Yeah. I'm like a I'm like an average to, I guess, a tad big 125er. Um, but 135ers, they're just at that level, they're they're big. I would, I would might, I would fight a 135 maybe, but mostly 125. I mean, obviously, over the last year, we've seen a lot of changes at 125 pounds with DJ, uh, you know, being traded over to to one. You know, when all that went down, did you look at your own career and go, "Whoa, what, what's what's going on at, at, with my division?" A hundred percent. I mean, I, I still think about it a little bit because, like, that's scary. You know, like, that's a big gap. And then, the like, 135, that weight class, a whole nother level because the guys are so much bigger. So, like, that puts everything in perspective. Like, you know, what what was I going to do? I'd have to gain some muscle, get a little bigger, you know, or something like that. But 125, I feel good at. I got the weight cut down pretty good now to where it's not really – it obviously always sucks, but yeah. <laughs> I got it down pretty – pretty good now shot 125 draw stay i feel good there does anyone like cutting weight no especially <laughs> me because i i eat like i'm heavyweight so it, it, is was there a go-to meal for you once the fight was over and you knew you could kind of uh you know take part in whatever you wanted to yeah i, I mean you name it like honestly pizza pizza and like reese's peanut butter cups i just love so that's like what i eat all the time oh i, so, I yeah I, I, I find my hey. favorite and at least you're fighting after you know before Halloween, so you can kind of indulge in the in the treats for Halloween. Uh, look exactly, at your tap. Yeah. Look at your tapology uh, has a nickname as Ruthless. Uh, what? what how, how did you get the nickname? It's actually kind of funny. So before this fight too, I um I switched camps back to my my first trainer that I ever had when I was 16, and um just because like I need to focus on more MMA. Like I was focusing before on just kickboxing one day, then wrestling another day. And now I do everything, like, as it's all whole sport all the time. And I feel like that had a big effect on just everything, too, because I'm doing MMA all together. So I started um, going to my old coach, and that just, like, uh, made everything a lot better. You know what I mean? But So what was the question again, though? In terms of how you got the nickname of Ruthless. Oh, okay. So, that, that, okay, that's, that's why I got back to my first coach, because one day when I was, like, six, starting out 16, Started doing the adult class when I was 17. So once I got to the adult class, I um he used to put me with like all these bigger guys. Like I mean like like bodybuilder guys. If they come in the room, they'd be like, Oh, you're gonna go with him today. And they'd always give me like this weird look, like I was like 120 pounds then. They're like, This kid? And um, I would just like mean. Like I'd be like, I didn't care. I just went after like, I was mean, like taking him down, mm-hmm. like and one day like he's like, Man, he's like, You're ruthless. And then it just kind of stuck, and he called me it ever since, and uh, it was pretty cool. Awesome. But of course, uh, we look. Congratulations on the victory here at CES Fifty Nine. Look forward to seeing uh, how your career progresses here, and, and see if that big call does come over here in the next uh, twelve months. Uh, of course, let her know anything. Follow you on social media. Anybody else you want to shout out? The floor is yours. Yeah. So I'm just on Facebook as Josh Ricky, Instagram as Jay Rick One Twenty Five, and uh, that's why I make my coach. Anybody who's ever helped me, and then especially my family, because they do a lot for me. You know what I mean? I want to be able to train as hard as I do without 
you know, them supporting me and all that stuff. So they do a lot for me.